Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Good afternoon, and welcome to Dalhousie University's Spring Convocation. My name is Terry Balser. I am Dalhousie's provost and will be your master of ceremonies today. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, and pay my respects to the elders. Wela Leo. Please be seated. There are two times on university campuses that are of particular significance. The first is at the start of each year when we welcome our new students to campus, and the second is at the end when we come together, as we are today, to celebrate the completion of your programs. For many, this day comes with a range of emotions. Sadness at leaving behind a community and a place, or perhaps eagerness to move on from this place. Possibly fear for those who aren't sure what's next, and certainly gratitude for all those who supported you along the way. But above all, I hope you feel pride. You have done what many people only dream of, and you should be proud of the accomplishment. But whatever the emotion, convocation marks the end of years of hard work, a turning point, and an opportunity for a new chapter, and that is definitely something to celebrate. So, throughout today, feel free to make noise and take lots of pictures, and you're welcome to move around the auditorium, but please be careful not to block those behind you who also want to take pictures. And in particular, when you watch your grad walk across the stage, this area can get a little bit crowded. So we ask that you be mindful of and be careful of one another uh, as you congregate here uh, during the ceremony. And please do share your best pictures with us on Twitter at hashtag Dalgrad. Uh, and as always, convocation is being webcast so that you can watch it again and again and again as many times as you like <laughs> through the Dal website. So now I'd like to take a moment to introduce those individuals who will participate during the ceremony as well as a few other members of our platform party. So when I call your name, please remain standing as you're able. The Honorable Anne McClellan, our Chancellor. <laughs> Peter McKinnon, Interim President and Vice Chancellor. Joyce Carter, Board of Governors. <laughs> Peter Farney, Vice President Advancement. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Hewitt, Chair of Senate. <laughs> Dr. John Newhook, Dean, Faculty of Engineering. <laughs> 
Dr. Adam Donaldson, Associate Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies. <laughs> Dr. Ivan Joseph, University Beadle and Vice Provost of Student Affairs. <laughs> Dr. Amal Ghanem, Associate Prof Professor with Engineering and our Convocation Speaker. We'd also like to highlight the following engineering faculty members who have joined us on stage. Dr. Kamal El Sankari. <laughs> Michelle Pan. <laughs> Dr. Jean-Francois Bousquet. Mm -hmm. Dr. George Jarjura. Also on the platform party today and as in the audience as well are others who have contributed to and have been committed to your success all the way along. These include not only your dean and associate deans, uh, but numerous faculty members, staff, and administrators. They're absolutely essential to everything that we do. And I, I would ask them all now to stand as they're able for us to acknowledge them. And we also thank all the family, friends, and supporters who've joined us today to celebrate the graduating students. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to ask Interim President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University, Peter McKinnon, to give the opening remarks. Thank you and good afternoon. Welcome. Chancellor McClellan, members of the academic procession, parents, family guests, and particularly our graduates. Before I begin my formal remarks, I want to take a moment to acknowledge a special feature of this convocation season. In the past, a university mace was placed at center stage to signal the start of each ceremony. While the mace served Dalhousie well over the years, in 2016, the university established a MACE revisioning committee to craft an object that better reflects the diversity of the Dalhousie community and its values while paying tribute to the university's history and heritage. Earlier this month at our first convocation ceremony at the agricultural campus in Truro, we unveiled Dalhousie's new dawn staff of place and belonging the staff was created by award-winning Mi'kmaq artist Alan Silliboy and collaborator Mark Austin. They worked with artists and craftspeople from diverse communities across Nova Scotia to bring it to life. <clears throat> with the New Dawn staff, we journey proudly into our third century, informed by the past and inspired for the future. Thank you to the artists and collaborators for their work on this important project. Well, convocation is a wonderful time of year for students, for those who have supported their studies, and for those of us who work at Dalhousie. Seeing graduates cross the stage and posing for photos with family and friends on this beautiful campus is a source of immense pride and joy. If you will permit me a moment of reflection, I cannot help but think of my own graduation from Dalhousie when I received my Bachelor of Arts degree 50 years ago in the spring of 1969. As I reflect upon my half century of life since then, the most prominent themes relate to the changes I have witnessed at Dalhousie, in Halifax, in Canada, and the world. <clears throat> Nothing endures but change, said the Greek philosopher Heraclitus more than 2,000 years ago. And while he was speaking of the cosmos, his words apply to earthly life as well. I cite as but one example, my arrival 50 years ago at Queen's University to begin my legal education. There was a new offering in the curriculum, a first at Queen's or at any Canadian law school. The new course was called Computers and the Law. And it was taught by a professor, Hugh Lawford, the course was quickly the object of sarcasm, even derision on the part of our class. 
what serious law student would take computers and the law? Must be some kind of flaky bird course in which you don't have to do any work, and it would be easy to acquire an A. Serious law students take real estate transactions. Commercial law, wills and estate planning, taxation, not some peripheral, impractical, quaint offering called computers and the law. Well, looking back now, 50 years later, Professor Lawford and his new class in computers and the law foretold a revolution in law, in legal practice, in law libraries, legal research, and legal services. The late Professor Lawford is remembered as a pioneer who saw change coming, who understood its emerging shape, and who stepped out from the crowd to lead it. Nothing endures but change, and that brings us back to the full meaning of today. What change will you and we face? What shall be the political, technological, environmental, employment, and personal changes that you will encounter? How adaptable to change will you be? Will you lead it, watch it, resist it? The single greatest preparation for adaptation and leadership is advanced education, and that is the real meaning of today. Your families and friends, your instructors, and all who contribute in any way to Dalhousie University celebrate and salute your success. I am fortunate enough to join them and to join you in this well-earned celebration. Warmest congratulations and very best wishes, always. I now invite our graduates to please rise. Madame Chancellor, as Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees on those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to their respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights and privileges and responsibilities appertaining thereto, those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by Senate. Admito vos ad gratum. Congratulations. Graduates, you may be seated. I now call upon Dr. John Newhook, Dean of Engineering, to present the candidates who are here today receiving diplomas and degrees, followed by Dr. Adam Donaldson, Associate Dean of Graduate Studies, to present the candidates who are here today receiving higher degrees. Thank you. The names of some of the graduates to be called will be followed by the designation Sexton Scholar or Sexton Designation. Dr. F. H. Sexton was the president of the Nova Scotia Technical College from its establishment in 1909 until his retirement in 1947. In honor of his contribution to the university, we designate as a Sexton Scholar each graduate who has obtained a cumulative academic standing of A or higher. The names of some graduates to be called will be followed by the designation Distinction. These graduates have successfully completed the requirements of their program with an academic standing of at least A- minus during the program. The names of some of the graduates to be called will be followed by the designations Gold T Award or Silver T Award. These are graduates who are recognized by the Student Union for their participation in athletic, student government, or extracurricular activities during the course of their studies. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you the following candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for diploma in engineering.
Walid Hisham Abdel Malik, Diploma in Engineering. Oluwantan Mishi Daniel Akande, Diploma in Engineering. Yichen Bai, Diploma in Engineering. Azat Al Bazari, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Timothy James David Adamosa, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Olivia Grace Billard, Diploma in Engineering. Devon Mackenzie Boudelier, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Emily Margaret Kraft Chisholm, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Liam pa Patrick Delahanty. Diploma in Engineering. Kirk Norman Drabel, Diploma in Engineering. Tristan Eng, Diploma in Engineering. Matthew Leon Goodick, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Chan Goa, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Brad Tucker Jones, Diploma in Engineering. Andrew Michael Keefty, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Caitlin Elsbeth Lane, Diploma in Engineering. Emma Suyin Lishenok, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Jacob David Locke, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Yon Lu, Diploma in Engineering. Anthony McCool, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> William Richard Mann, Diploma in Engineering. Samuel Alexander Meisner, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Jaron Monsi, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Ian.
Katrina Evelyn Grace Mullaney, Diploma in Engineering. Michelle Pellerin, Diploma in Engineering. Parker John Rauder, Diploma in Engineering. Mahi Shaheen, Diploma in Engineering. Maxim Vino, Diploma in Engineering. Alexandra Jewel Widden, Diploma in Engineering. Benjamin William Wilkie, Diploma in Engineering. Chihan Jai, Diploma in Engineering. Shaha Zhao, Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those students who are here today to receive the Diploma in Engineering. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you the following candidates who fulfilled the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Engineering. Sarah Abdun, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Mohammed Omran Abu Saad. Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Sun Kwan On, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Tala Al Sakawi. Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Yusuf Alami, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Muhammad Hani Al Yusuf. Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Natalie Marie Ash, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Natalie is also the recipient of the Albert Swan Award. Jonathan Au, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Nicholas James Barrett, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Let me 
to say that uh, Nicholas's mother, who will be helping present his degree with our president, is in fact from Cape Breton University, and it's a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. Congratulations. Uh, what is next for you? Good, wonderful. Good. Dylan James Baston de Coast, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Brian Allen Beard, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Gregory Eric Began, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Emran Billa, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Matthew Clifford Bryson, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Tessa Denise Bulmer, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering with Sexton Distinction. Mason Dell Butler, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Daniel Richard Campbell, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering with Sexton Distinction and the University Medal in Industrial Engineering. John Charles Campbell, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Brittany Sarah Carter, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. information to the audience and this lovely young lady is graduating as you've heard in engineering this afternoon and her mother Joyce Carter who serves on our board of governors is actually going to join our president Peter McKinnon in presenting her daughter's parchment so it's a special afternoon congratulations <laughs> Jacob Brandon Chaplin Saunders, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Lulu Chen, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Dax Kieran Glynn Conrad, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Megan Louise Cornelius, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. William Gillespie Craig, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Joshua Johannes Creelman, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Distinction.
Kenneth Ray Dolson, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Paul James Duchesne, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. Michael Robert Evelyn, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Nikon Fakari, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Oakley David Feltmitt, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Shane Gillis Frazier, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Frank Theodoros Gembish, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Sandra Samir Gergis Gorgi, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction, the University Medal in Electrical Engineering. She is also awarded the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers Medal. <laughs> Liam Scott Greben, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Sun Kwai Guan, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Adnan Faiz Haman, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Mishika Hanadege, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Syed Rahula Hashime, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Benjamin Scott Hatfield, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> David Gareth Hoare, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. Xi'an <laughs> Hu, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Atul Jacob Anil, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Oh. <laughs> Kelly Elizabeth Keo, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical in sorry, in Industrial Engineering with distinction.
Liam Patrick Kidson, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Eric Johannes Kimbley, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Jack Lowen, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Brett Matthew Laird, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Ling Li, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Ma Chi Li, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Yi Lei Yang, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Congratulations. Guan Jie Liu, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Julian Liu, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Caleb, Caleb Queen Hunlo, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Nicholas Robert Lohr, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Matthew Dean McCormick, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Ashley Marie McDonald, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Catherine Marie McDonald, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Seamus Alexander McDonald, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Angus David McIntosh, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Patrick Robert McIntyre, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. Brett Alexander McIsaac, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Amit Kumar Malik, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering.
Rose and Philippe Benoit Norbert Marmon, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. special visitor is 10 months old and her name is Rose. Rose and she's dressed in Rose as well. Congratulations dad and all the best. Mohammed Irfan Malana, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. John Connor McGinnis, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Benjamin Barrett McKenna, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Connor Allen John McLean, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Connor William McLeod, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. Brendan Zachary Stewart McQuaid, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with distinction. <laughs> Horan Mo, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Mohammed Ahmed El Amir, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Ben Joseph Murphy, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Aria Mellor Alexandria Murray. Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Listia Nadira, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Jeanette Kashima Nasabuka, <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Emily Rose Napier, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. President this afternoon. I don't know, Peter. We've got lots of people helping him, and this afternoon, uh, Ms. Napier obviously receiving her degree, and her uncle, John Hope, who is the university's counsel, will be helping the president present the parchment. Congratulations. Carl David Obam Ondo, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. John's taking a lot of time with the pictures. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> and I can say that. Kartikeya Pandey, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Zachary Leslie Parent, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Lane Patton, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Gerald John Petrash, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Spencer James Powell, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Heian Chi, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Ran Ran, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Joshua Andrew, Rector, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Taylor Adam Robinson, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Nicole Catherine Zadkowski, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Cedric Adam Sonogo, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Lauren Marina Schaefer, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Devin Shashane Sinclair, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. lovely graduate sponsor. Congratulations. All the very best. Oliver Winston Smith, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Tom Edison Smith, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Connell Joseph Steers, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Kenneth William George Stronach, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Tharika Therushel Varajan, 
Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Would you like, where are they? Where are your mom and dad? There. Where's your mom? Right there. And a big special thank you from both of us to you, mom. Thank you. Matthew John Douglas Townsend, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Charlemagne Tremblay, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Laura Ann Trider, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Krista Lucille Vey, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Brady Walsh, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Hayden Wan, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Wan Jun Jiu, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Keshen Wen, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with distinction. <laughs> Ashley Page Wheaton, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Jeffrey Aubrey John Westwood, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Isaac Philip Wright, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Samora Shi, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Ray Xiao, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Hosam Omar Saad Yassin, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Meitin Yon Yid, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Sebastian McGrory Power Young, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Ho 
Hon Zhang, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Di Wei Zhao, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Guanzhen Zhao, Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Yichen Zhu, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Madam Chancellor, with cue card 177, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Engineering. Our engineering profession also recognizes the accomplishments of our graduates in their final year senior design projects through the Engineers Nova Scotia Senior Project Awards. Would the following students stand at their seats to be recognized? The Engineers Nova Scotia Senior Project Award in Industrial Engineering, Tala Al Sakawi, Mohamed El Amir, Nick Lor, Cedric Sonogo, Youssef Alami, Mazen Sheet. Carl Obam Ando and Brad Rod Goudreau. <laughs> There's a second award in industrial engineering for the project award in honor of a leading professor in the department. The Eldon Gunn Senior Project Award in Industrial Engineering goes to Sarah Abdoun, Tessa Bulmer, Jack Campbell, and Jacob Chaplin Saunders. The Engineers Nova Scotia Senior Project Award in Electrical and Computer Engineering goes to Sandra Gorgi, Emily Napier, and Taha Taki. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you the following candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the Master of Applied Science. Kosta Bendigenevil Sudarshan, Master of Applied Science in Electrical Engineering. Karen Lynn Esau, Master of Applied Science in Biological Engineering. <laughs> Mehdi Hassan, Master of Applied Science in Electrical Engineering. Tyler William Herod, Master of Applied Science in Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Caitlin Miles, Master of Applied Science in Industrial Engineering.
Kristen Leanne Reed, Master of Applied Science in Industrial Engineering. Imad Sadun, Master of Applied Science in Industrial Engineering. <laughs> Nitisha Sharma, Master of Applied Science in Electrical Engineering. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Applied Science degree. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you the following candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the Masters of Engineering. Ankush Kalsi, Master of Engineering and Industrial Engineering. Ayush Patel, Master of Engineering and Industrial Engineering. Lai Suresh Patel, Master of Engineering, Electrical Engineering. <laughs> Joshua Salmon, Master of Engineering in Industrial Engineering. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Engineering degree. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the university, and as such represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. I am pleased to present to you the following candidates who through thesis and examination have fulfilled the requirements of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Madam Chancellor, the awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and the thesis advisor. We are pleased in this ceremony also to recognize the, thesis, or the supervisor of the doctoral candidate and we ask the supervisor to stand and present the parchment to the graduate following hooding. Following the awarding of the degree in hooding, it's with great pleasure that I invite our newest PhD to join the faculty on the stage. Karama Altamimi, Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering, supervised by Dr. Kamal Elsankari. Rashad Alsakarana, Al <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering, supervised by Dr. Yasek Flo.
Zina Sahib, Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering, supervised by Mo Ahawari. Sorry. She's scared. She will not be the first person scared of me, I can assure you. Her name is Amaz. It means hope. What a wonderful name. And aren't you just the cutest thing in that beautiful dress? And now we have to give her mother her cape to acknowledge this amazing achievement. Um, your PhD, finished your dissertation. Where's your supervisor? He's not here? Oh. Oh, oh, I, sorry. Well, that is too bad, but congratulations. And what is next for you? Uh, let's go. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Here or somewhere else? Ottawa. Ottawa. Wonderful. And congratulations to you both. And you're very cute. Madam Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Thank you. Please join me once again in congratulating all of the graduates. I'd also like to call attention to the families and friends of our graduates. We know that convocation is an important occasion for you as well. And I'm sure that all of us here recognize the importance of your love and support along the way. So we would like to express our gratitude to you for the role that you have played. I ask the graduates in the onstage party to, to rise as you're able. Graduates, your family and friends have been applauding you all afternoon. Now it's your turn to honor them with your cheers and applause. You may be seated. Dr. Amal Ghanem is an associate professor with Dalhousie's chemical engineering department and has been appointed the assistant dean of diversity and inclusion in the faculty of engineering. In her new role, Dr. Ghanem will work as a leader in advocating, supporting, and implementing equity, diversity, and inclusion goals within the faculty. She will continue to enhance the culture and environment in engineering so that women, indigenous people, visible minorities, and other groups are able to connect and feel valued as successful engineers, students, faculty, and staff. With exciting advances in biomedical engineering, saving and improving the lives of people in Canada and around the world, we are currently on the threshold of dramatic medical advancements where in situ tissue repair and regeneration is a realistic goal. The achievement of this goal is dependent on the availability of appropriate biomaterials, techniques for assessing biomaterial activity, and methods of processing these materials. Dr. Ghanem's research projects aim to address these issues by investigating the use of the biological polymer cytosan as a tissue regenerating matrix. It is with great pleasure that I invite Dr. Amal Ghanem to address convocation, Dr. Ghanem. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, President McKinnon, Dalhousie officials, honored guests, faculty, parents, and most of all you, graduates of Dalhousie University. Congratulations. 
I'm honored to be able to be here with you today to celebrate and recognize your tremendous achievement. We're gathered here together for one last time to reflect on the past five years of friendships, classes, exams, parties, tears, and everything in between, and also to look forward. You arrived here from different cities, towns, and countries. This might have been your first time taking classes in English. Maybe you had uh, an excellent background in math and physics, programming. Maybe you had to spend a little extra time and effort to get there. But you're here now, and you made it. So aside from statics and dynamics or mass and energy balances, what have you learned, and what will you do with it? You're probably feeling a strange mix of confidence and accomplishment tinged with some fear and insecurity. Most of you are moving into a new world, one that may not require you to solve problems that are clearly laid out with diagrams and variables. In fact, this is where your engineering education will really start to, to kick in, and where you will find out that you really will never stop learning. So in light of that, I would like to share some things that I've learned over the 29 years since I was in your place as an engineering graduate. One thing I've learned is that engineering is not just numbers, equations, and graphs. Engineering is creativity, teamwork, and communication. So around this time last year, I was visiting a local junior high school to promote STEM education. I had slides on my computer, and I was all ready to sh show my shiny presentation about how wonderful chemical engineering is. So the first thing I asked was, who loves math and science? And the room was quiet. So I was a little confused, but then one kid from the back spoke up and he said, well, it's hard. So clearly I'd been spending too much time in my ivory tower doing math and science, and I needed to think a little bit more about what it is that I do as an engineer and what makes it so appealing. Since I was a child, I loved making things, putting things together, whether it was building forts in the, in, in the, in the woods, uh, sewing doll clothes, or making slime in the kitchen. I've always enjoyed creating. And as an engineer, I find great satisfaction in having an actual product of my work. So it's that creativity and inventing and making something new that is very much a part of engineering. And that is my message to you. Engineering is more than just numbers and calculations. It's about creativity and solving problems, using the calculations and tools that you have been taught. There might be a right way and a wrong way to solve one particular equation, but there's often multiple ways to solve a larger problem or create a new design. Doing this in teams with and for other people, in consultation with community members, persuading your boss to go along with your idea, encouraging and giving feedback to people who you supervise. So what does it mean to say engineering is creative, and how can we foster that ability to innovate? We usually think of creativity in terms of making beautiful paintings or a piece of music, but creativity involves coming up with something novel, a, so, a new uh, solution to a problem or something different. It can be an idea, a thought, a new solution, or an actual product. So in engineering, we usually add that this is useful and relevant, um, and very often our creativity is incremental. We build on the work of others. Coming up with new and creative ways is probably going to be the very hardest thing that you do as an engineer and in life, and that's because there's a few elements of creativity that are very uncomfortable for us, and those elements are judgment and ambiguity. So how does this influence our creativity? So to be innovative, one must be able to generate ideas freely with room to explore, without too many specific uh, constraints in the early stages of ideation. So you need to welcome a diversity of thought and approaches that can result in multiple solution paths, defer the judgment and constraint to later stages. So it's very easy to let this judgment be a barrier to creativity. After all, that's what we've been doing the past five years. You've been, you've been being judged, right? Um, you get assignments and tests are being marked. You did this right, you did that wrong. Eventually, in your final years, you get into projects where you do more, um, there's not necessarily a right path and a wrong path, but by that point, you may have already let the fear of judgment silence you and your great ideas. 
Have you been in a class or a meeting where a question pops into your head and you say to yourself, oh, I can't ask that. Um, I should know the answer to that. And then someone else asks the same question. Or you think of a new way of doing something, but you don't pursue it because you think your idea, if it was such a good idea, it would have been done already. So I can share an example from my own, own uh, experiences um, in this regard. Uh, and maybe you can think of your own. So many years ago, I had invited a uh, world-leading researcher to work with me on a research project. So I didn't know her at all uh, prior to inviting her. And sometimes world-leading researchers can be a little bit intimidating, and they want you to know how smart they are. Um, but at our first meeting, we had students and other professors giving talks and presentations, and the very same thing happened. I had a question that I thought, oh, that would be a silly question. I can't, I can't ask that question. But this brilliant world-leading researcher asked the very same question that had been on my mind. The question then sparked a lengthy and fruitful discussion that led to new and innovative ideas. Clearly, she wasn't concerned with people judging her question. And in fact, her very question had the effect of creating a working environment that fosters creativity by being judgment-free. So I encourage you to seek out that kind of environment. You'll know it when you've found it, and it does exist. I also encourage you to make that kind of environment for your peers and for the people working for you. So ambiguity, my second uh, element of creativity, um, happens when you really aren't sure what the question is. Um, you don't know what to ask, or you can ask a question, but there's not really an answer. So do you remember those dreaded test questions where you were given too much data? or you had to make an assumption. I'm famous for those sorts of questions on my tests. Um, those are, and I always say, these are real world situations to my students, um, but those are situations with ambiguity. There's uncertainty, uh, and you have to exercise judgment and innovation to better define your problem and create a solution. So my example in this regard is, uh, if any of you have ever done home renovations or done any, any home building projects, it's an excellent example of this ambiguity and uncertainty that one has to deal with. So my example is when I designed a beautiful fence for my backyard with nicely spaced fence panels uh, at regular intervals every six feet, um, and then holes need to be dug three feet down below the frost line in our, in our climate. Uh, the posts are then set and cemented. As is often the case, after I started digging, I hit a rock. So at this point, creativity has to kick in. We have the uncertainty. We don't have a neatly laid out problem. We have to be creative. So one brainstorms their options. Do I make a two foot hole instead of a three foot hole and risk having um, my post bend? Do I move the rock? How big is the rock? Am I going to have to dig a huge, huge hole? Or do I modify my design? So any of these paths could have turned out OK, or they could have been disasters. So at this point, one does further research to make a decision, or sometimes we have to make a decision. So there are many paths that could be followed. And this is similar to your own future. So you can look at your own future with a creative lens. Today, you graduate with a Bachelor of Engineering degree, Master's of Engineering, Master of Engineering, si Applied Science, PhD, or Diploma in Engineering. So it's the successful conclusion of many years of your own hard work with the support and love of your family and friends. It's a real joy to be here to see you as someone who teaches students to see your faces. And I couldn't stop smiling as you walked across the stage. So I wish each and every one of you happiness, success, and joy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ghanem. Graduates, let me be the first to acknowledge that as you leave the auditorium today, you will officially become part of a Dalhousie alumni network of more than 135,000 people around the world. And that is a tremendous resource. I hope you'll take advantage of the connection to the broader Dal community, and we invite you to get involved and stay involved. 
In recognition of your new status, members of the Alumni Association will have a pin for you on your way out, and we hope that you'll wear it with pride. So congratulations again, and welcome to the Dalhousie alumni family. Graduates and guests, the business of convocation is concluded. Everyone is invited to a reception to be held in the sculpture court following this ceremony. After the singing of O Canada, you are requested to remain standing if you are able as the academic procession leaves the auditorium. I now invite you to join Rihanna Robinson, a Dalhousie voice student, in singing our national anthem. Thank you. 